to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt praise the father praise the son praise the spirit three
doing things. Like I said, working on stuff. Um, so next week, masks encouraged but not required. Um, we'll still be doing the social distancing like this and we'll still be doing the RSVP in advance because we, we just know that as soon as you take away the requirement for masks, people are gonna be coming out, which is great. We want them to be here, but we need to be able to do so safely, especially um, in recognition and honoring the wishes of the mayor. Uh, we're tech Oklahoma City, um, even though we have an Edmond address, but in Oklahoma City, the mayor has uh, encouraged and requested continued social distancing parameters. And so we wanna be able to control that a little bit and we wanna honor the authorities uh, above us. So uh, with that, we'll continue to do the RSVPs, continue to do the social distancing, but masks optional, uh, but encouraged. As far as uh, communion goes, today, uh, we'll have communion as we did last week. If you weren't here, basically um, I and, and our elder will come to you to deliver uh, the grace of God through the, the bread and the wine. So we'll come to you. It'll happen during one of our songs. Uh, so it'll be slightly different, but we'll, we'll come to you uh, to deliver communion. Um, next week, we'll go back to our usual schedule, which is every second and fourth and fifth Sunday of the month, uh, it, when, whenever we have a fifth Sunday, uh, that's when we do communion in this place. So second and fourth Sundays, uh, starting next week, we'll go back to that rotation. So next week, no communion in here, um, but communion in the traditional sanctuary. Um, boy, I really think that's probably it. You guys are tired of listening to me. Um, how are we doing? Okay, we're getting band members slowly. Okay, they're coming, okay. Um, I'll tell you what, it has been uh, an amazing feat that our volunteers and staff have been able to um, put together all sorts of things, um, and they've saved us in a pinch, uh, and I especially, I'll just recognize uh, Sebastian and, and Evan uh, and what they've done for, for a lot of this, uh, these services, and Keith Miller's been there on the, the soundboard as well, really helping out and, and learning a new soundboard even. And so it's been great. So God has blessed us in this place. And now we're blessed because it works again. Uh, so I apologize for, for vamping like that and, and talking. Uh, but, you know, I know I personally hate it when you're sitting there and it's supposed to start and you're like, mm, someone messed up. So I, let's just acknowledge the elephant in the room. And someone did mess up. It just happened. It happens. We're still learning this new system. So um, with that, I think all other announcements are there uh, in the wrap, if you grabbed one. Uh, we have our bulletin, which, uh, yeah, just has sort of an outline of the service itself. Most of everything else will be on the screens. With that, I think it's time to worship. So I invite you to stand. And we worship together in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, you are good. You are gracious to us. You are merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. God, you hear our prayers. You listen to our cries too deep for words. So in this time when our nation is in turmoil for various reasons, we turn to you. We look to you for guidance, for wisdom, and we lift up the cries of our hearts because we know that you are listening, that you hear us, and that you are responding. Today, you respond to us through this fellowship of believers gathered in, in worship. You respond through your, wor through your word coming to us. You respond through your means of grace, through the Lord's Supper. So Lord, bless us in this time. Be present in this place among us that all that we do and say and our, our songs would be uplifting to us and glorifying to you, honoring you. Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit that we would be empowered to go out into the world as the people you have called us to be, a people in mission for the sake of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. And we speak responsibly, come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the people and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O oh, come, let us worship him. Alleluia. God bless your worship here today. to 
chased rivers from lowly seas to where they rise against the rush of grace descending from the source of its supply and in the high Stop at nothing, you're just not that hard to find. to a time of confession. God knows our heartaches and he knows our high points as well in our lives. And he calls us as his people to confess our sins before him, confident that he will forgive our sins 
and purify us from all unrighteousness. Now with this, uh, in this service today, we're sort of combining our absolution with the, the Lord's Supper so that we can taste and see how good the Lord really is uh, and his forgiveness. So with that, we're combining our confession with our statement of what we believe about uh, this sacred meal. And so we speak together about what we believe about this sacred meal. I believe that I am a sinner by my nature and by my thoughts, words, and actions. Through sins I commit and through neglecting the things God would have me do. I believe that because of my sin, according to God's word of law, I deserve nothing but death both now and in eternity. I believe God is gracious and merciful. He sent his only son to save me from my sins. By his death, Jesus defeated death. By his resurrection, he offers new life to all who trust in him. I believe that Jesus physically and truly comes to me in, with, and under the bread and wine in communion. It is not a symbol or representation, but Christ's true presence coming to me personally. I believe the Holy Spirit works through this sacrament to bring me forgiveness for my sins and to strengthen my faith in Jesus. And I pray that I would be empowered by God's grace to make any needed changes in my life, to live as a redeemed child of the Heavenly Father. Take a moment of silence for personal confession and reflection. As you're reflecting, know that God is listening. That's our focus for today. God is listening. In Jonah chapter 1, there's a certain word that appears a few times. Down, 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 down. God calls Jonah to go one place, and instead he goes another place. It says he goes down to Joppa. Then he goes in into a boat. He goes down into the boat. He goes down to the bottom of the boat to sleep. And then he's thrown down into the sea. But no matter how terrible the situation became, the Lord was looking out for Jonah. The Lord was looking out for his own child, his own chosen prophet, his messenger. No matter how terrible Jonah had made his own personal situation, God was listening. God hears your cries. He hears your sins. The words you say that maybe you shouldn't have said. The words of regret. God sees you in those moments where you think no one else is watching. He sees it all. But he is also merciful. And he extends to you grace upon grace. Morning by morning, new mercies we see through this God of ours. So therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Christ by his authority, as if he was standing right here in front of you today, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to stand as we have our brief communion liturgy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We pray. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on sinners like us, and have given your only Son, Jesus Christ, so that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life with you. We give you thanks for this holy supper that you have prepared for us. As you have spoken your word of forgiveness to us in Christ, we pray that through this same meal, we would truly taste your grace and mercy that comes to us in this sacred meal set before us. Help us to faithfully eat Christ's body and drink his blood, just as he has called us to do in his own covenant, so that we may one day behold your glory face to face. Hear us as we pray in Jesus' name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. 
This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We continue with our next song. And like I said, as you're singing this song, please remain standing and I'll come to you with the, the bread and the wine, with the body and blood of Christ.
may this holy eating and drinking of our Lord and Savior's true body and blood strengthen you and keep you steadfast in the one true faith until life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. I invite you to be seated as we continue with our scripture reading for today. Good morning, church. Good morning. The scripture reading for today is from 1 Jonah, verse 17 through 2 Jonah, chapter 10. Starting in verse 17. The Lord appointed a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God, from the belly of the fish. I called out to the Lord in my distress, and he answered me. I cried out for help from deep inside Sheol. You heard my voice. When you threw me into the depths, into the heart of the seas, the current overcame me. All your breakers and your billows swept over me. And I said, I have been banished from your sight, yet I will look once more toward your holy temple. The water engulfed me up to my neck. The watery depths overcame me. Seaweed was wrapped around my head. I sank to the foundations of the mountains. The earth's gates shut behind me forever. Then you raised my life from the pit, Lord my God. As my life was fading away, I remembered the Lord. And my prayer came to you, to your holy temple. To those who cherish worthless idols, abandon their faithful love. But as for me, I will sacrifice to you with a voice of thanksgiving. I will fulfill what I have vowed. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Then the Lord commanded the fish, and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we will declare and recite together our faith using the ancient Apostles' Creed, relevant now and forevermore. We say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. Please stand as we continue with our next song.
cool things there, and this is something I picked up a few years ago. Now these are headphones, they don't have any wires going into them, and they don't have Bluetooth, they're just plain old headphones, but you know what they do is they protect my ears. Whenever I'm doing something really loud around the house, if I'm using power tools, if I'm using a chainsaw, these come in handy. I want to be able to hear the rest of the day. So now, we've been talking about this guy named Jonah. Now this guy, right now, he's run away from God and he's actually in the belly of a whale. And you know what? He is talking to God. And my question for you guys is, do you think God's able to hear him? I mean, he's in a whale in the bottom of the ocean. How in the world is God going to be able to hear Jonah's prayer? You know? If you're talking through a fish in water, I mean, it's almost like you have big headphones on over your ears, but you know what? God promises that he hears all of our prayers. He doesn't have his hands over his ears. He doesn't have headphones on. God says he hears every single one of our prayers. So let's go to God in prayer and know that while we're praying, God is listening to us. So let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, Thank you for listening to me. And God, thank you especially for sending Jesus to be our Savior. Amen. All right, stay in your seats again. <laughs> well, it's great to be here. It's great to be in this place. I see on that phone screen there's Leia, so I might be preaching to her as well. Who knows? It's good to be here. It's good to see you guys. It's good to be in this place. So, grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father, and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So, like I said, we've been talking about Jonah. We talked about him last week. We're going to talk about him today, and we're going to talk about him throughout the rest of June. And as hopefully as you've been seeing from last week and then today, you're going to see there's a lot of interesting things in this book of Jonah. There's a lot of quirky things, a lot of things to <laughs> learn from. There's a lot of negative things. There's a lot of positive lessons that we can pull from this scripture. So being in Jonah chapter 2 today, we need to remember that Jonah's firstly a prophet of God. He's one of God's servants. He's a prophet in northern Israel, and God comes to him and says, hey, 
I want you to go to Nineveh. I want you to preach to that wicked city because their sin has come up before me. And Jonah, being a man of God, says, no way. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go in the complete opposite direction. He does the complete opposite. He turns around and he heads for Tarshish because he doesn't want to have anything to do with these people in Nineveh. Those people are wicked. Those people would probably harm or hurt him if he got near. Those people don't deserve God's forgiveness? Those people, even if they did repent, Jonah doesn't want to have anything to do with them. So he takes off. He gets on this ship, and he goes on his way to Tarshish. And along that way, while he's fleeing from God, God's pursuing him. And while God is pursuing him, he sends a storm. And this storm is threatening to capsize the ship. The sailors are crying out to all their false gods, and things are just getting worse. And finally, in an act of desperation, they go to Jonah, and they find out that he's the one who's running away from the Almighty God. And those sailors, they ask him, what should we do? What in the world should we do, Jonah? And Jonah says to them, throw me overboard, because that's the only thing that's going to save you right here and right now. So they do. They throw him overboard. And that's where we left off last week. So as we're picking up in verse 17 of chapter 1, the Lord says, Now the Lord provided a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. (laughs) Three days and three nights? That's like a long weekend. He's taken up residence in that fish. I mean, he doesn't know he's going to be there only three days, but he's there for three whole days. Just think about the size of that fish. Just think about what's happening around you as you're just sitting in the belly of this whale. Had to have been incredibly amazing. And as we see Jonah, and as we look at the book of Jonah, we start to see these cornerstones, these promises, these themes throughout the whole book of Jonah, these themes that deal with sin and grace. Now, sin, we've already seen that in the story. Jonah's running away from God. Whether it's an act of disobedience or frustration or fear or whatever it is, whatever causes him to run away, we can probably relate to. You know, what causes us to run away from God, to disobey him, to rebel against his will for our lives? Well, when we run away from God, that's sin. But grace is... While we're running away, grace is God pursuing us. I mean, it's amazing to think. I mean, truthfully, we're just big messes. We've got all kinds of problems, and it'd be really easy for God to say, go on, just go. I don't want to have anything to do with you. I'm going to wash my hands with you. That'd be super easy for God to do, but that's not what he does. That's not what grace is. Grace is following after us, pursuing us. It's never quitting. So that's the grace we see in the story. So as we continue in this book of Jonah, and we look at Jonah, we find him in the belly of this great fish. Today we're going to look at his prayer, his conversation with God. Now as we look at his prayer, we look at the words, we look at the verses, we're going to learn some things we shouldn't do, and we're going to learn some things that, yeah, maybe we could do. Maybe we could model after. But to start with, How many of you guys have prayed today already? Yeah, I see some heads. I know we've prayed in this service, but I don't know about you, but I pray every morning, especially on Sunday mornings. I am so thankful that God wakes me up on time. It's my biggest fear. So I wake up and say, thank you, Lord, for waking me up in this morning. That's the first pray I I prayed today. And then it just continues. We have all these prayers that continue throughout our whole day. And there's things that continue to weigh on us throughout our days. They're weighing on our minds, they're weighing on our hearts, these things that we're bringing to God in prayer. Things that come up, situations that occur. Maybe you remember, hey, my friend asked me to pray for them. I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna do it. And as you think about prayer, The thing that's amazing about it is it's not something that you need to do at a certain age. You can do it at any age. I mean, we prayed for the children's lesson. 
I bet you children are even praying before they speak. We have all these prayers that we can bring before God. It's a profound way to spend our lives in conversation with God. And I bet you know that conversation, that prayer with God that you're going to have your entire life, it's not going to end, and it shouldn't end, because God is continually giving us ways to learn more about him through the power of prayer. So as we begin in chapter 2, verse 1, it says, Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish, saying, I called out to the Lord out of my distress, and he answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and you heard my voice. So here's Jonah. He's in the fish, in the ocean, and he's beginning his prayer. But remember, what was he doing when he was on the ship? He was asked to pray. He was so angry. He was absolutely wanting nothing to do with God. And even when the captain of the ship goes to Jonah, wakes him up and says, hey, we're all praying upstairs. Why don't you? Jonah doesn't want to have anything to do with it. He doesn't want to have anything to do with God. He doesn't want to have a conversation right here, right now. He's in complete malicious rebellion. <laughs> but now, things have changed. And they tend to do when you're thrown into the ocean and swallowed up by a great fish. Maybe you start praying now. So in the belly of this fish, he's suddenly in crisis mode. And in that crisis mode, he's crying out to God. And I'm sure you and I do the same thing all the time. We pray to God when crisis comes. Even if we don't pray on a regular basis, when crisis comes, you definitely start praying. And those prayers in crisis are based on a need for relief. We do this all the time. We're reminded to pray in times of crisis for relief, to pray for the people, to pray for the victims, to pray for the circumstance in general, to pray for God's protection. And we lift up our prayers to God to provide relief for situations. And these are good and appropriate prayers. So while prayers of relief are good, there's another prayer that can follow those. Another prayer that should be underlying every single thing we do in this life, and that's a prayer of hope. Because we pray for hope, we're praying for God to bless and intervene into our lives and to allow his goodness to be profound throughout our lives. Praying a prayer of hope is a prayer of trust. We don't pray that prayer out of desperation. We pray it because we want Almighty God on our side our Heavenly Father, to bless what we're doing. So when we pray for hope, we pray a prayer that continues on because it's a prayer based on trust, not desperation. So that brings us to verse 3 of Jonah's prayer. Here's Jonah. He says, For you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the floods surrounded me. All your waves and your billows pass over me. And then I said, I'm driven from your sight. Yet I again should look upon your holy temple. Keep that in mind. Holy temple. This is a cool point in Jonah's prayer because he actually gets something right. It's pretty cool. This is what Jonah says. He says, I shall look again on your holy temple. So think about it this way. One thing that I've really become accustomed to here at Holy Trinity is these sanctuaries here in Luther Commons and down the way all these buildings, I'm getting really accustomed to them, but one thing that I've really become accustomed to is about that way, a little tall, you probably see it, it's the bell tower. Throughout the day, it chimes, it sings, it plays hymns. I've gotten really integrated into the schedule that it provides for me. It really regulates my work day, and as I hear those bells. I really do hear them because my office is right directly underneath them. <laughs> I, I can't even teach, I, I can't even have a Zoom call while, while they're going off because it's just so loud. But as I hear those bells throughout the various hours of the day, they remind me that I'm close to this church. Not just close in proximity. You know, these past few months, you can even hear those bells from like five blocks away. There's more people that are hearing those bells than just us. And as I hope you guys have been blessed by our online worship services, 
in a few of those services, you can even hear the bells chiming away. And whether I'm hearing those bells in person or if I'm hearing them online, they really remind me that I'm home. And those chimes remind me that I'm close to this fellowship of believers. It reminds me that I'm close to this church home, this church family. You see, it's really an important thing for me and for you, but sometimes we mistake home being a geographical location here on earth. Sometimes we think it's more of a structure. But as we look at what Jonah says, we look at what Jonah gets right. He says, in this terrible situation, I'm on the brink of death. And I'm about to lose my life. I'm longing. I'm looking toward the temple. Now remember what the temple was in ancient Judaism. It was where God's presence literally dwelled. God was in that place. So Jonah's saying, my home, the place that I long for is where God is. And that's really important for us to understand because the fact is there's nowhere on earth that's ultimately our home. We do a lot of things here. We love a lot of things here on earth, but the reality is that this is just a temporary state. We're here visiting, and we're here on a mission. God has left us here, and he leaves us here until the end of our days for the purpose of sharing his love and the hope of Jesus into the world around us. And when our mission is over, he takes us up into heaven home because that's where God is. And maybe some of you guys are singing in your head an old hymn, 200-year-old hymn saying, I'm but a stranger here, heaven is my home. Earth is a desert drear, but heaven is my home. Danger and sorrow stand round me on every hand. Heaven is my fatherland. Heaven is my home. So that hymn reminds us that in this life, we're moving from place to place, and there's people that we love, there's places that we love, and there's things that we love, but the place that consistently calls us back is God's word. And we know that ultimately, our home is going to be in heaven with God. And that should really change us. It means that we have a purpose here, and we can be focused on that purpose, but we can never lose sight of where we belong and to whom we belong. And that brings us to the conclusion of Jonah's prayer. He says, but I, will, but I with the voice of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you. Catch this. What I have vowed, I will pay. Salvation belongs to the Lord. What I have vowed, I will pay. I don't know if you've caught it, but Jonah's here. He's on the brink of death. His heart and minds are longing towards the place where God is. He got that part right. And then he turns around, and he's starting to try and bargain with God. He's trying to negotiate. He's trying to say just the right thing. God, if you rescue me from this belly of this great fish, I'll do exactly what I promised. If you deliver me, I'll declare your name, and I'll sing your praises. He's trying to make a deal with God, and you know that's never a good idea. Good thing we never do anything like that. Sometimes we're actually really trying to say the right thing, but we know that never works. That's not God's plan. We're a people set on revelation, where God has told us about his love, he's given us his promises, and he hears us every single time that we pray. So now when you think about Jonah, Jonah's this guy who's serving God. God. He's a prophet. He's supposed to know God's word. And despite of all this theological expertise, when the chips are down, he really gets this part wrong. He does something theologically dumb. Now contrast that with the sailors on the ship. Now you know, they're out there and they really don't know the one true God. They're crying out to their own false gods. But when that doesn't work, they go to Jonah and they ask him, what should we do? do. They're going to God's prophet, and they're asking, what should we do? And Jonah now has this opportunity to say all kinds of things for hope, for revelation, to trust in God. And what does he say? He says, throw me into the sea. He had the greatest opportunity, and he just blew it. 
And as they throw Jonah into the ocean, remember what the sailors prayed? They said, God, don't hold this against us. For what we're doing, have mercy on us. Those sailors who have zero theological knowledge about anything, when they call upon God, they're calling upon his mercy. If you don't remember anything about this message, your relationship, you should remember, your relationship with God should not depend on anything you do because it doesn't. Your relationship with God depends on his love for you. It doesn't depend on some great understanding of doctrinal concepts. It doesn't depend on theological wisdom. Your relationship with God depends on his love for you. And the fact that God sent his son to die for us, and he sent his spirit to create faith in us. And you know, we didn't even come up with that faith. God gave it to you as a gift. All you can do in return is trust in him. And when all is said and done, your relationship with God depends on nothing more than his love for you and the fact that you trust him. And Jonah really, he doesn't understand this at all right now. He's really a mess. So congratulate yourselves. You're one step ahead, Jonah. You know that your relationship with God is about his love for you and you can trust in him because of that. Well, that brings us to the end of Jonah's prayer, but I think it'd be helpful to talk about prayer just a little bit. And as we looked at Jonah's prayer today, just a little bit of it, you can really understand that prayer isn't perfect. It's not about saying the right things or coming up with the thing that sounds the best. We can't make things perfect because we're broken, sinful people. But we know that even though our prayers are broken, even though our prayers aren't perfect, God is still listening to us when we go to him and pray. And the fact of the matter is God hears all of our prayers. It's all about God listening to us, reminding us of his promises, reminding us about his love and his grace and his mercy and his passion to know that he's the greatest part of our lives. He's there blessing us through our lives. Our prayers don't have to be perfect. We don't have to say all the right words. But God says to bring everything and anything to him at any time. God, our Heavenly Father, loves us as a father loves us. And he's listening to us when we talk to him. And there's things that upset us. And God knows the things that are weighing heavy on our heart. But God is still our Heavenly Father inviting us to bring our lives to him and to go to him in prayer with all of our frustrations and all of our fears. Even if we're upset with God, we can still go to him and talk with him. And he's still listening to our prayers. No matter how rebellious we get, God is still our Heavenly Father and we can bring everything to him. And lastly, prayer is about promises. Here's the last thing you need to know. We know that the Bible is full of God's promises. You hear those promises when the word is preached to you, as you study God's word in Bible class or at home. You hear God's promises as you dive into the word with your small groups, as you teach your children about stories like Jonah or other ones. The more that you are in God's word, the more you hear about his promises. And the more you know about his promises, the more you'll know what to pray for. Because you know God made us all kinds of promises and when we pray and we call upon those promises, we know that God's going to keep his promises. And all throughout our prayers, we can remember the things that God has promised. And we know especially that he's promised to listen to our prayers. God even listened to a wayward prophet on his way far away from him. He's trying, Jonah was just trying to distance himself from God but God still listened to his prayer when Jonah started to speak. God was listening. In that situation, in our situations, no matter what's happening, God is listening to all of our prayers. He's really listening, even when things like Jonah get scary, dark, distant, a little wet. God's still listening to Jonah. And God's doing everything to get his prophet to the people he wants them to, you know, he, he wants to get Jonah to the people of Nineveh. He's doing everything he can. He's throwing a huge storm into the mix. He's having a whale catch him up. 
God's promises are going to make it to those people. Jonah's going to preach to the people of Nineveh. That's God's plan, and it's going to happen one way or another. And as we see God's plan happening, we know about God's plan for our lives, a plan of salvation, that even if it required a cross, even if it required the death of his son, God's going to deliver on his promises. He's going to deliver on his promises of salvation for you and for me. We know that God's always keeping his promises, especially his promise to listen to us. So let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, thank you for your love and thank you for sending your son Jesus to be our savior. And thank you for listening to all of our prayers while we worship you, while we go about our days, when trouble comes, when joys come, Lord, we thank you for listening to us and keeping your promises. In your holy name, amen. All right. As the band comes up, we're going to continue with our LWML Might Box Minute. Am I speaking this? Okay. So the June might mission focus in support of a $95,000 grant for student scholarships in Zacapa, Guatemala to attend Divine Savior Lutheran School. Uh, let's learn more about this unique mission ministry by watching the following video. Divine Savior Lutheran Church, Zacapa, Guatemala and Holy Cross Lutheran Church, Wichita, Kansas, initiated a program of outreach to the children of the local Zacapa landfill called the Lights for Christ program. This program helps children living in the landfill by addressing their physical and spiritual needs. Through the Lights for Christ program, children receive an academic and Christian education at Divine Savior Lutheran School in Zacapa with their uniforms and books provided. They also receive well-rounded meals twice a day during the school year. There is a need to have the Lights for Christ children continue their education after the sixth grade so they can have an opportunity to grow in their faith and rise above the poverty of their families. This grant would fund 90% of the projected cost for these children to continue their education from seventh through the twelfth grades. We continue our service by going to God in prayer, knowing that he is listening to us. So we pray for all God's people in Christ Jesus and for all others according to their needs. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Christ, you are the Lord of the harvest and the Lord of the church. We pray for the witness of your church in the world today. In every city, village, community, and home across the globe, the hope of salvation will be proclaimed and the voice of the Lord will be heard through the gospel. We pray for the ministry of the LWML, especially as they partner with the people of both Holy Cross in Wichita and Divine Savior in Zacapa. We thank you for your love and compassion for the people of Guatemala. Bless the children who will receive the scholarship funds. Increase their knowledge of you and the work, and work a saving faith in Jesus as Lord. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord of life, we pray for our members celebrating birthdays this week. We pray for Sarah Beamling. Joyce Boltinghouse, Dalen Davis, Karen Johnson, Ava Schlesinger, Donald Knudsen, Owen Walker, Glenda Coors, Sam Irwin, Robin Bailey, Derek Holston, Joanne Knudsen, Lori Nance, Hope Knight, Sydney Anderson, Joshua Sire, Brooklyn Giles, Jonathan Klein, Grayson McBride, Gloria Schweissow, and Brenda Maley. You have graciously called them and claimed them in baptism, so let them continue to experience your blessings, and may they be a blessing through every aspect of their earthly life. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord of the nations and Prince of Peace, we pray for healing in our land, which is so divided and torn over by so many topics and issues with no end in sight. Sin and Satan are so perverse and pervasive on every front before us. Give us your grace to your people so that we may serve you honorably in accord with your word of truth. Bring unity within our nation. Open ears to hear the cries of opposition and oppression. Open our eyes to see the good in others and the problems which need action. 
and open our hands and arms to embrace all people for whom Christ died. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of love, we pray for those celebrating marriage blessings this week as they mark their anniversaries. We pray for Dennis and Rita Paul, Sean and Vesta Reitenauer, Ray and Clara Hasselwander, celebrating 57 years, uh, Timmy and Michelle Higgins, Ron and Doris Horn, Bill and Susan Foster celebrating 52 years, Jay and Janet Harlan, Michael and Alyssa uh, Berenberg, Robert and Kathy Castens, Larry and Linda Robbins, Mark and Stacy Yates, and Mark and Debbie Mills. Let the love of each of these couples grow stronger through every joy and sorrow experienced until that day when one should lay the other into your arms for eternity. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, in your earthly ministry, you proclaimed good news of the kingdom, brought healing for every disease and illness, and had compassion on the helpless and harassed. Hear us as we cry to you for the sake of the sick, the troubled in mind, the wounded in heart, as well as those who grieve the loss of a loved one. Especially, we pray for John and Tammy Place and family as they continue to grieve the passing of Tammy's mother, Joyce. We also pray for all others on our prayer list, including Dick Anderson, Reagan Beatty, Shirley Confer, Brett Downing, Jerry Garner, Pastor Henke, Timmy Higgins, Audrey Olson, Jerry Parkinson, Rita Paul, Gary and Michelle Quick, Paul Robb, Carlton Schmitz, Will Van Hooser, Natalie Worrell, Sylvia Wickens, and all others who we name on our hearts. Deliver them from affliction and sustain them in hope with a patient heart and strength for the day. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, you have promised to hear the prayers of your children, and you're always listening to our cries, to our groanings, to our praises, and to our confession. In mercy, you answer our pleas, especially through the person of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. By his sufferings and death, he has redeemed us sinners from our sins, and by his resurrection, he has released us from the fear of death. Therefore, we pray boldly and with confidence in you. Help us to live as your own people, doing the good works for which you, we were created, and praying with confidence the petitions and supplications of our hearts. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please stand. To God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in his holy church forever and ever. Amen. Christ died. Christ is risen. Christ shall come again. Jesus said, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. To love God, love one another, and love your neighbor. The Lord bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.